Good afternoon, Olive, Arlo, and Frank. <clears throat> Grandpa coming to you with some herb tea from the garden. This has bay rum leaves in it. It's not alcoholic. It's just some tree called a bay rum tree. They, it, the leaves kind of look like bay leaves. And we used to have a bay leaf tree in in Carl Gables, we don't have one here. I'd like to get one, but we have limited room. But this also has some stevia plant in it. It has um, another kind of herb that's really good for tea that was like blossoming. I forget what that's called. St. Peter's. St. Peter's Marjoram or uh, something. And some sage and a little bit of basil in there. So cheers. Today we're gonna open the Bible to the 11th chapter of Exodus. And we're gonna look at the 10th plague, or as they call it in this version of the Bible, and this is the um, New Living Testament, I'm sorry, the Net Bible, not the NLT, the NET, Reader's Edition. <clears throat> you can go on bible.org and, and read through the entire Bible. And <clears throat> sometimes I do that just so you get an idea of, of going online and, and using the Bibles. So I will do that occasionally where you're reading through the Bible with me. Frank, of course, you already know how to read. You're 22 and a half years old. And uh, Arlo, you'll be learning pretty soon. You know, you know some of your letters. I don't know if you know them all. And Olive, you're pretty close to saying your first words. So chapter 11, verse 1 says, The Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. After that, he will release you from this place. So for the last nine plagues, and they were severe turning the Nile to blood, actually turning all the water <laughs> into blood. And you can't drink blood. I mean, that there's dishes that are made where you, where you like drink raw blood, but I wouldn't do that. And, and you're not gonna hydrate yourself drinking blood. It's not good for you. <clears throat> Frogs everywhere. Like when they went to, to bake bread, they'd open the oven and frogs would be in there before they even started the fire. And then they'd open up their their spelt. I think that was the, the grain that they used in ancient Egypt a lot to make their bread. And they'd open up their canister of, of uh, spelt and there were frogs in there and they had eaten all the stuff. There were a plague of locusts and darkness on the whole land. In the beginning, Pharaoh's magicians could recreate the same miracles somehow. <clears throat> There's a lot in this world that we don't know about. We hear a lot of stuff, urban myths and, and conspiracy theories, <clears throat> but there's just a lot that we don't know. And you're just, you're never going to know. Maybe someday we'll know when we get to the other side. But this is going to be the worst of these plagues. And what God is saying is, hey, Pharaoh wouldn't let you go. He kept saying he would let you go, but he didn't. But this time you're going to get to go. <clears throat> it's not going to be as smooth as you want it to be, but you're going to get to go.
When he releases you, he will drive you out completely from this place. Instruct the people that each man and each woman is to request from his or her neighbor items of silver and gold. So Pharaoh didn't like the Jewish people, but apparently the Egyptians did because they got to say like, hey, give us some stuff. And, and they, they gave it to them. And we're going to see that this stuff is used for good things and for bad things when they get out into the wilderness and wander for 40 years. Spoiler alert. They don't go right to the promised land. Now the Lord granted the people favor with the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, <clears throat> respected by Pharaoh's servants and by the Egyptian people. Moses said, thus says the Lord, about midnight, I will go throughout Egypt. And, and he's not saying that he, Moses, is going to go out. He's saying, well, this is what God said. I will go out. God will go out. What's he going to do? And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt will die from the firstborn son of Pharaoh, who sits on his throne to the firstborn son of the slave girl who was at her hand mill and all the firstborn of, of the cattle. So, and by cattle, he means domesticated animals. So any kind of domesticated animals, the first, firstborn, it, it means the first son, the oldest son of, of the people and of domesticated animals. God's going to kill them. There will be a great cry throughout the whole land of Egypt, such as there has never been, nor ever will be again. Here comes your grandmother. But against any of the Israel, Israelites, not even a dog will bark against either people or animals, so that you may know that the Lord distinguishes between Egypt and Israel. Forgot to put this back on, didn't I? All these your servants will come down to me and bow down to me saying, go, you and all the people who follow you. And after that, I will go out. Then Moses went out from Pharaoh in great anger. The Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you so that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And that's very important. But God's not doing this to show off he's doing this to make a point and if you say to yourself did he make that point i'm going to say that yes he did he made that point because this book was written i think over three thousand years ago and i'm reading it to you this is one of the oldest stories. It's a true story. I believe that everything that it says in here happened exactly the way it says. Now, I'm going to talk about this for a second just because one of you listening to this is half Egyptian. If you believe in God, he doesn't make a difference between you. When he says he's making a, a distinction between the Egyptians and the Jews, the, the children of Israel, he's not saying that absolutely you're damned if you're an Egyptian. Because we're going to see that millions of people are getting ready to leave Egypt. And it's called the children of Israel and a mixed multitude 
they don't say exactly where all that mixed multitude is from, except that it's mixed. So it's from more than one place. And I'm sure some of those people are Egyptian. There's probably people from all over that known area of the world um, from 3,000 years ago. So, so Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. He did not release the Israelites from his land. But that's all going to change because it's Passover time. And we'll, we'll get into the Passover ceremony, which for the last 3,000 years has been held every year, every year. Until then, peace out.